All right, we are live. Uh, I'm going to disconnect that. Okay, so I hope you guys can hear me. Let's see. All right, if anyone's watching live, probably not, because I know um, Harrison from SMT Mainline is streaming right now. So probably not going to hear from, well, much of anybody. Okay, one person's in. Uh, would you mind sending in the live chat real quick if you can hear me or not? While you do that, I'm going to um, grab a box opener. One second. There we go. All right, give me a moment. All right, so I apologize for the uh, poor camera quality, but I'm just on my laptop. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Uh, can you hear me okay on that end? Yeah or no? If I don't hear a response, I'm going to assume no. Oh, oh, hey, Varun, what's up? Can you hear me okay? I just need to know if my mic is working. No, 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 no. The little thing's not going up. Oh, you guys can hear me. Okay. Hey, I'm Bradar. Hello, Preston. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, guys. Okay, so I'm sure you can guess by the title, but we've got a massive unboxing. And hello, guys. I just got home uh, for a brief stint out in Madison doing school stuff. Uh, I just got out of COVID-19 isolation, and I'm doing much, much better now. Um, but mail call, and a big one when I got back home, as you can see, you can't really see it, but there's a couple more packages on top. There's one off screen here. So we've got a lot of stuff to unbox, and let's just get started. Um, on the stream, thank you so much to whoever that was. All right, so there's a ton of, like, N-scale stuff in here. Hey, what's up, Black One Rail fan? Great to see you. All right, now, I ordered a lot of stuff over the past couple weeks, so I'm not entirely sure what's all in everything. Um... I'm going to be doing more than just live streaming soon. I'm going to have some nicer, uh, proper content coming out in a minute. Let's pan up a little bit so you guys can see me. All right, uh, let's get started with our first box. And this one, uh, I don't recognize the address, so I don't know what's in here. But like I said, I bought a lot of N-scale stuff. This is mostly going to be N-scale, but let's see what we got. I'm expecting a number of HO things as well. I think I know what one of them is. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Um, may not. It probably hasn't shown up yet, like one rail fan. But anyways, yeah, great to see everyone here. I got a whole nine people watching. Oh boy. All right. Okay, so we got good packing first of all. Ooh. Okay. This one I know Varun is going to be very excited for. I'm gonna do the tender first. Looks like it's going to be a good live stream. I hope so. Thank you, Coco. Great to see you here as well. Bruno knows. Hello, Jack. I love you. Oh, wow. Okay, this is not quite what I was expecting. This is actually a lot nicer than I originally thought. Any of you guys guess what this is? Uh, except Varun. Not you, Varun. You know exactly what this is. Uh, anyone know? Just by the tender. Uh, it's not River Aussie. Oh, it's hot. Beautiful. Mantua Crescent. Like one rail fan, you are very close. It's not a Mantua Crescent. It's made by Mantua, but it's not listed under Mantua as a manufacturer. But it's not hotter than you. Thank you, Jack. I love you, too. Uh, don't tell Elizabeth. Just kidding. She's on the door. She knows. All right. I saw that on eBay. Oh, wow. There she is. This is a Franklin Mint Crescent Limited 462 Pacific. Varun is excited. This thing, wow. This is really in excellent shape. I was expecting this thing to look a lot worse when I got it. Wow. I'm thoroughly impressed. This looks amazing. Uh, I hope it runs as well as it looks. I will try and test some of these on camera. 
That's interesting. It has a almost River Aussie-like drawbar setup. It's going to be a bit difficult to get here while I'm on camera, but, you know, there we go. I'm going to set that here. And uh, I do plan on doing a video on this guy before I head home because I'm going to, you know, compare this to the River Aussie version most likely. Um, but I'm not going to do a full video on that. I'm just going to focus on this guy. Really impressed. Wow, this thing is gorgeous. Um, glossy paint is a bit much, but I still really like this thing. Number Item number one is a success. Okay, I'm super happy with that. I'm just going to start grabbing random boxes and opening. So, not sure what's in here. Don't recognize this address either, so let's find out together. Always cut towards yourself with a knife, kids. Okay. I am reading the Holy Bible, the Fiat Owner's Manual. This should be a good runner. It's a beautiful locomotive. Yes, I hope it runs well. Uh, probably going to need a tune-up, but... This is extremely light. There's like, it feels like there's nothing in here. Oh, very good. Okay, so um, this is an interesting item. This is a great, ah, thanks William for that great advice. Ah, yes, you're quite welcome. Anyways, um. This is an interesting uh, item here. I recently had the opportunity to buy some new old stock Atlas NCL motors, and I jumped at the opportunity. So for eight bucks each, I got some brand new um, River Aussie Atlas 462 Pacific and 282 Mikado motors. So I've got two here, two spares. Um, if that ACL Pacific is acting up, or say I burn the motor on my Crescent or something like that, or not Crescent, sorry, Alton, because that thing was smoking the last time I ran it. Um, I've got spares, so I'll be able to keep those engines alive and running well for a long time to come. Motor go brrr. Yes, thank you. Just bubble. <laughs> yeah, all right, hang on. I need to check the chat really quick to see how everyone's doing. Hopefully the stream is at least sort of engaging for you guys. I see our, our viewer count has gone down. Probably because uh, SMT is live streaming right now. Yeah, he and I got in a slight argument about how he treated his blue goose, which is uh, a recurring theme. Okay, this one I also don't recognize the name on it. Oh, wait, but I do recognize the location. Nearly sliced my hand off right there. I honestly cannot tell how this box is supposed to go together. It's so covered in tape, like, I can't... Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't find the box flaps for a minute there. There we go. Okay, this is something I've been a lot better than SMT. Thank you. I appreciate that. The superior is live. SMT is not the superior. Okay, so this thing I'm super excited for. Train Man 77 message retracted. Aw, sadness. I don't watch SMT anymore. He got too big of a channel. Yeah, that's when things started to go wrong. Is like um, his viewer base got so big that his live streams were impossible. Location tape world. Yeah, just about. All right, so here we go. This one um, I ended up paying more than I should have, but I really wanted one of these, so I went ahead and jumped at the chance. This is N scale. So, like I said, a lot of NCL today. Oh, my God. We have 11 people watching. There's my younger brother again. Of course he's here. Crescent. What is it? If you mean what's in the package, croissant, um, well, I'm not going to spoil it yet. The thumbnail is key, lol. 11 people. Holy shit. Hello, people. Yes, exactly. I apologize for the swear word. The other 15 have a go near that. Yeah. Pretty sure the other 15 are the ones watching his stream. Oh, okay, cool. I can do this without uh, spoiling it. This thing I'm really excited for. Um, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with these engines so far, but they are good. Thoughts on Monk? Monk Superior. 
Anyways, go back. I want to be monkey. Do, 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 do. Reject society, become monkey. Yeah, exactly. All right. So this, I paid more than I should have for it, but I'm just going to go ahead and unroll the, unroll the thing. Hopefully this showed up in better condition than I was expecting, because given uh, the pictures, this thing didn't look too hot. I stand pleasantly corrected. This thing's in really good looking shape. This was not promised in uh, running condition, but, you know, here we go. 13, how do you, 17 people! Holy cow! When did I become uh, interesting or relevant? Let's get the tender out. Sweet! Yeah, Varun did call it. Varun totally called it. There we go. There's the uh, Atlas Riverasi Crescent Limited. So I finally have a, uh, a proper one to go along with the uh, cards that I have. It looks like the bell kind of became a casualty of shipping, so I'm just going to really carefully bend that back into place and pray that it doesn't snap off. There we go. And the bell is fixed. Still no crescent fall. <laughs> There's one of those at my local antique mall, actually, and I might buy it just for the memes, given that I have this much crescent stuff. I'm just going to real quick set this here and uh, grab one of the cars to show you. If they're not on the layout, they might be on the layout. Heck, no, I boxed them up. Wait. Aha. Here's a loose one. Here's the Crescent cars and the engine. Um, unfortunately, the previous owner appears to have done a uh, scale coupler conversion on this. So I'll have to um, convert it back to the Rapido style couplers. Crescent phone. Radar, please buy a Crescent phone. I will call you on it. Um... I honestly can't tell the status of the motor just looking at it from the outside, but um, this engine seems to be in pretty damn good shape, so I'm happy. Let's set this guy over here. That bell needs immediate super glue attention, so I'm going to hold off on that until the end of the video. Or end of the stream. All right. <clears throat> I'll buy one, too, just to piss off. <laughs> yeah, do it, please. All right, 15 people. I can get two Crescent phones for 10 bucks. Dude, Caleb, please, we will buy them from you. Probably not unironically. I'm not even joking. Bad Braid Arbin Harry. Hi, Gopher Hopper. I have an NYC Hudson and the middle wheel shakes. What should I do? Uh, Morgan, if you're talking about the wheel bouncing up and down while the engine's in motion, what that means is that one of your wheel sets is out of quarter, most likely. Um, there's not a ton you can do about it except make sure that the wheels are and axles are properly lubricated. Um, that'll help with the bouncing, but if it's still persistent, you'll need to requarter your axles or just find out and work out any binds in the running gear. Anyways, um, if you want more help with that, send me a DM or something on uh, whatever. I've got my contact methods somewhere on YouTube. But anyways, on to the next one. Uh, I still don't know whose this one is. And this one, I don't recognize the location either. Oh, by the way, that uh, Crescent N-Scale locomotive came all the way from Texas. And as we know, they're going through a tough time right now. Uh, so best of luck to them. My heart goes out to them. All of the above. I live in Wisconsin, so I'm used to being popsicle. That 30 seconds of will making that locomotive. <laughs> Just explaining it, I suppose. It's more in-depth than any of SMT's fixes, I'll tell you that, because I would have at least, you know, cough, cough, waited for the proper draw bar. There we go. Hello, Jack. Thank you so much, Go for Number. You're quite welcome. Okay, I also don't know what's in here, but more N-scale stuff, evidently. Okay. Oh, now I know what's in here. Awesome. Okay, so... um. This is something that I can't... All right, I guess I'm Henry now. Did I say Henry? If I said Henry, I'm sorry. All right. 14 people watching. Wow. Okay. Thank you, everyone, truthfully. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, there's one item that did not make it into tonight's live stream that I have to actually go and pick up tomorrow. It is a... Uh, I'm just going to tell you guys about it. It's a River Aussie FEF number 844 that I found for... Uh, 50 bucks on Facebook Marketplace, along with a couple passenger cars. 
I'm going to try to open this so that I can show it to you guys, but I need to be really careful around the bubble wrap. There we go. Very nice. Okay, so, uh, hey, GoPro Nopper, do you have Instagram? Yes, I do. Uh, that's under my personal. It's just Will underscore Degui. Uh, you're welcome to follow me there. I don't post a lot of train stuff. That's just my personals. Caleb, I believe I've actually contacted you on there before. Um, I will send you a, a DM in just a minute. All right. Let's see if you guys uh, recognize what this is. Anyone? Anyone? Anyone that's not uh, Faroon? 844 is... I'm not reading that out loud, but... That, that video is equal parts hilarious and terrifying because I find it difficult to believe that you could possibly not notice that you're standing on the tracks. Big six. Oh no, not quite. It's not as interesting. And I'm sure some of you are going to, I believe it's a Bachman tender, maybe a consolidation close. It is a Vanderbilt tender, but yeah. Uh, Mr. Fane McIntosh got it right. That is a Bachman Mikado, but it's one of the early versions. So there you have it in end scale. This I'm really excited for. I've wanted one of these for a long time. Uh, it's, it's even got the superheater on there, the superheater detail and everything. That was the big missing link. I've gotten a couple offers for these that are missing this. And uh, this is the one that I was really looking for. So I hope I can make this thing run okay. Uh, it's got visibly out of quarter axles on this side. I'm going to see if I can just really quick rotate those back. Yeah, this one's pretty loose. So... It's probably going to be some hard work ahead for me on this guy, uh, but I, I will get it running. I'm, I'm super excited for this. These things, as, as ugly as they can be, I think they're gorgeous. It's it's either you love it or you hate it, and I definitely fall into the uh, latter category, I believe. So I love it. <laughs> All right, we're going to put this guy over by the crescent. Definitely not precariously close to the edge of the table. This thing is heavy. Oh. I'm sure I can guess what's in here, given that it's this chonky. Also, if Dan Heckler... Yee, what did I miss? Just a lot of boxes. 15 people watching. Again, thank you to everyone for your support, uh, for spending this time with me. If you're watching this in the recap, thank you so much for that as well. Um, these boxes I'm not as big a fan of because they're not very easily reusable. But... Oh, interesting. Here's what I'm looking at right now. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and pull this off. Ah, it's here. Um, Dan Heckler, the train man, eat your heart out. Guess what it is? And you thought that your um, New Haven was packaged poorly. This is literally felt strips. Will address. Oh, you saw my address. Coming from. <laughs> oh, hey, Skylight. What's going on? Uh, time to steal some trends. Good luck. I will fence you for my trains. I fence, if you aren't aware. I will. It's sword fighting. I will sword fight you. Coming to steal the bog. Well, actually, Braidard, you need to find Varun's address to steal the bog, because it's currently out on loan to him. Um, kind of like equipment rotation with uh, Roanoke and all that stuff. Mantua or Tycho? Um, I believe both, technically, actually. But here we go. Open her up. And there she is. Say 462 Pacific, number 5322. C&O. Um, apparently this scheme is pretty rare. I'm going to be editing two vids tonight. I'm done editing one. Subscribe me. Sorry. I can't brain. Subscribe to... What am I talking about? I'm having a stroke. Anyways, um... I should subscribe to you, and I'll, I'll take a look at that later. Far if you're on my hit list. I have a gun. Gun is better than a stupid sword. I mean, if you really want it that bad, come and take it. Um, oh, that's interesting. This thing appears to have a bent main rod on the side. See that? Real quick, have a look-see. Oh, that's already a lot better. I'll have a look at this. Um, if I can, I'll just remove it from the wheel set and use a pair of duckbill pliers to flatten it out. 
Dan Dan the Heckler Man comment for that. Yes, he is. He actually wouldn't leave me alone about it for a while. But uh, it's all complete, and it's actually in really great shape. Sweet. All right, well, I'm going to set this guy next to the crescent. It'll be just off camera there. Another tiny one. Just hammer it out. No, no, man. It's terrible. <laughs> favorite railroad. Oh, that's a hard one. See, I try not to pick favorite railroads. It's more favorite pieces of equipment. But if I had to decide, probably the NYC or the PRR between them is really difficult. I don't think that one is inherently better than the other, but I tend to like the NYC's equipment better. How are the President's Choice locomotives doing? Oh, they're quite good. I run them every once in a while. Um, I just haven't gotten around to making a video on them. Get an IHC mount on those computers. Matt, I literally have a drawer of like six of them. Do you need me to get them out? I'm, I'm here. I'm good. I'm tired. Uh, Coco, that should be easily fixed on a few inches. I've done a few like that before. It just takes time fixing all of them. It's running great shape. Yep, uh, all I'm going to do is just flatten it out with a pair of duckbill pliers. That'll that'll take care of it right away because they have flat, non abrasive surfaces. It'll just squeeze it right out. I is back. Oh, hi, Varv. By the way, Bradarv is coming to kill you because uh, he found out that you have my bog bog. Bradarv, you already have a bog bog. Matt Conan being Matt Conan, correct. 19 people watching. I think that's a new record. Oh, this is moderately terrifying. Um, this is the packing job on this guy. Hopefully it uh, survived okay. Oh, it seems pretty stiff to be put together in there. This was a really good deal. Actually, I got this thing super cheap. I think 25 bucks total. And there we go. The tiny little Bachman, I believe. Uh, 440. Yep, Bachman 440. In um, Great Northern. Ah, oh, that would be the repair that they were talking about. The drive shaft fell out. I thought I was in for something extraordinarily difficult. Um, I was told the engine would power up but not run, and I suppose the drive shaft just came off. Maybe the axles are bad or something. But I can't really see any outward uh, underlying issues that need desperate attention. So, you know. Henlo! Uh, yes, very good packing. Yeah. Who is Zane? Train guy 4501, is that Zane? Thoughts on water, beverage, earth juice. Very good. Oh, um, I forgot. I should be discussing prices for all of this stuff. So the CNO 462 Pacific um, came in at 50 bucks after shipping, which is a bit more than I would have liked to have paid. But um, given that the rod is bent, I'll probably ask for a partial refund on it, even though I can fix it. What's good, Train Guy 4501? Uh, these boxes, they're quite nice. But anyways, yeah. So 50 bucks total on that one. The Crescent Limited was a steal. I got this engine for $35 uh, shipped. So I, I put in an early pipe dream offer because I, I literally just bought this thing and I didn't want to spend too much. So I kind of said, hey, $35. I was expecting them to decline because if I'm being honest, it is a low ball offer given the market. But I guess they really wanted it moved because um, they accepted my offer. So here we are. The Crescent Limited is probably the most expensive thing that I've bought in this lot. So $75 after shipping. So expensive, but also a difficult to find paint scheme, uh, at least in good shape like this. So, you know, I'm glad I, glad I jumped at the opportunity. The Bachman Mikado is, I believe, the well, second cheapest thing I've unboxed so far. This was $25. Um, shipped again. I'm just rounding these. It's like about $24 and something cents, something like that. I'm just rounding them for ease. But this one's going to take some work. I uh, threw an offer at them on this and they, they took it. The, the original starting bid was 30 bucks, but I told them that the axles are probably broken and they, they went for my offer. Oh, there's a wheel missing. Okay. Interesting. Like a, a pilot wheel. I've got spares, so it's fine. And then, like I said, this guy at the little Great Northern 440 was $25. This thing is actually pretty good looking. I'm very happy I grabbed this. I have a Jupiter and um, I think I actually had two Jupiters in N scale. And uh, I sold those ages ago. So glad I have a 440 again. All right. This one, I also don't recognize the name on it. Oh, before I forget that this exists, I better... Or no, never mind, that's already empty. 
Oh, yeah. Here's this from last week. This is the Southern Pacific uh, Coast, Moose Hudson. All right, let's see what we got. 16 people watching. Hey, guys. Oh, no, 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 no. My um, comments section is... I'm getting a THC. I need to scroll up a bit and catch up. Based in NYC Pilled. I don't know what that means. Uh, I have an actual duck bill if you want to flatten it. Not that kind. Ha, ha, ha. It has bog bog. Yes, you do. You're packing. Ah, oh, I got stuck right here. Okay, so beverage. Good choice. Thoughts on earth sauce. Same thing, Harry. Beverage. Shiny boy. I am mentally unstable and have fallen to the rock bottom, but at least I have a Fiat convertible that goes burr. I will buy MGB and we will race. Varv, I'm buying a PS4 phone and shipping it to you. Varv has the hots for Crescent. Yes, he does. I getting an IHC 482 steam locomotive. Very nice CSX railroad. Great engines. Dude, Matt, I've got the hots for you. Yes, you do, Jack. I know. We all do. Harry, do it. Exploded mustard. Ew. What? Okay. Prove it. <laughs> Thoughts locomotives. I've got one coming soon. So, um... Brass locomotives for me is a very mixed bag. I appreciate their detail and the professionalism that goes into making them. And when they're properly painted and properly maintained, they look phenomenal. And there are a lot of engines that really don't compare to anything in brass. Um, brass is fantastic for when there's a locomotive that's not produced mainstream, like the PRR S1 duplex or um, something incredibly specific like Bessemer stuff. For, that's for you, Dan. I'm throwing you a bomb. Um, perfect for that sort of thing. But for mainstream locomotives, like say a Dreyfus Hudson or an, you know, uh, what else has been produced to death? A, new, a Norfolk and Western J class. It, it just doesn't make sense to justify the price tag. And often older brass needs a lot of work to make them run properly. So I'm sorry, I'm trying to catch up on the chat right here. Also, okay, Varv, I will buy the PS4 phone. I've got the hots for no one. Relatable. Um... Jack and Matt, I'd like great Nort.vpn. <laughs> I got the title of video of that. Anyways, uh, it's a P14. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, WS, oh my god, my nose go red, BRB. I like that video you did on the Pennsylvania one. The, um, oh shoot, yeah, it's the mountain. That's actually a Pemco, but it's the IHC, um, prototype. Harry has D16 flashbacks. I've got those model power shark nose units and I've been working on them. Okay, very nice. Uh, Harry's talking about his D16 SB. Did you get the T1 fixed yet? The Reading T1? No. Actually, that's part of the reason why I wanted to come. I finally got enough money to send that out for repairs. It's literally right over there. It's all bubble wrapped and ready to go. Check. Uh, <laughs> Sun Pacific P14 Sunbeam. Actually, maybe. Um, If it were Pacific... This is a Hudson, unfortunately. I'll show it really quick. Why not? Whoa, a Sunbeam. Nice. Oh, the brass locomotive. Okay, wow. Fantastic. That's super cool. Um, please post a video on that. I will definitely check that out. Here's the uh, cursed Southern Pacific Goose, if you were wondering. I've got a little bit of repair to do on this. I'm going to add a headlight and... Uh... <coughs> I'm going to add a headlight and fix the tender wiring harness. Probably rebuild it with some stronger wire. All right, this one's been waiting long enough. Let's get it open. I already did that. What are your thoughts on Allegheny locomotives? Oh, man, they are gorgeous. Um, the River Rossi Allegheny is the one modern model that I really, really want. But unfortunately, I'll likely never be able to afford one. As much as I, I have two cars that can go at that Southern Pacific. Yes, I know. It's a GS format. That GS4. Anyways, um, they're gorgeous. They're stunning. I'd love to own one, but unfortunately, I can't really justify the cost. Um, if, if I had a way to get one, like over time or pay in parts, like I did with my chassis set, that would work out. But it doesn't. There we go. I'm gonna do the other one too. That one parted my hair. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I was going to buy a brass 2A2 for like 80 and the tender did not have no context, even as the wrong tender local works fine. It's been like two years since I heard from them. Yeah, I gotcha.
Okay, apparently I bought this from Toy Train Exchange. Fascinating. Let's see if the product was trash or not. Um, okay. Oh, I remember what this is. These are usually extremely expensive, and I got a great deal on this locomotive. Oh, uh, we're still talking price. Uh, I forgot to mention those um, Atlas motors were $10 a piece after shipping. It's pretty damn good. Um, usually the motors on their own sell for more than that, and especially because I already have the um, light fixture components. I need to take a really good look at the um, Indiana Harbor Belt locomotives that I have and find out if there's a way for me to graft the... Um, motor shaft onto there because if that's the case hello gopher Nopper, where do i look on facebook to buy trains so there's a lot of different places you can go you can use either the main marketplace or you can use uh, specific groups i personally prefer specific groups just look up model train buy sell and trade and you'll find stuff unfortunately facebook has been pretty dead recently anyways oh wow this thing looks fantastic all right here she is This is an MRC, which is technically a ROA, technically a River Rossi, uh, 284 Berkshire, an N scale. Like I said, these are not easy to find, and when you do find them, they're incredibly expensive, um, usually going upwards of 150 bucks. Uh, I got this one for 75. Oh, it even has the uh, original manual. Sweet. Oh, that's so cool. This box construction is very cool. I, I like this a lot. There she is. Wow. Got a little fake piece of track. This is made in Western Germany, so this is definitely the uh, Roa version. Put that back on there. This box is really cool. I like this a lot. There she is. Wow. Berkowish. I didn't even know it exists. Um, I did, just not a whole lot about it. So the one thing I was worried about upon ordering this is that the plastic um, running gear would look really flimsy and awful, but it actually looks pretty dang good in person. Am I allowed to see the 482 Mountain? Um, Tell you what, if you stick around to the end of the stream, I will personally go and grab one from my drawer. Any road name you can specify that I have. Um, I believe I have, I have Baltimore, Ohio, New York Central, Pacific, although that one's in terrible shape. Uh, PRR, um, and I think there's one more. Santa Fe, but the Santa Fe is a uh, partial custom. The previous owner put one decal on it, and uh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to put this back, back in the box because the box is very cool. This thing, uh, like I said, I have not tested any of these yet. I literally just started opening them, so I don't know if they're going to work or not, but we will find out hopefully at the end of the stream, if I can find a viable way to set up a way to test these. I'm going to not fiddle with this anymore. I'm just going to set it aside right over there. It'll be staring at you guys. Like I said, the box is just, I don't know why, but I find that thing super cool. All right. Um, definitely happy with that purchase. I just hope it runs as well as it looks. The Pennsylvania one. Um, sure, if you stick around to the end of the stream, I will absolutely grab it for you. Do you like diesel? I have about four, and I'm going to go on Facebook and sell them where you mentioned. Um, it really, really depends. Usually, no. I do almost exclusively steam stuff. Um, speaking of which, if any of you guys are in the market for an N-scale diesel, I'm looking at selling this guy. It's Atlas um, Master. What is it? Uh, SD24. I got a trade deal a while ago, and I just I'd never run it. It's N-scale, Caleb, just so you know. Um, yeah. So if you want more information on this, go ahead and contact me. Uh, yeah. Next one. I don't know who this is either. Oh, by the way, you are welcome to send me a uh, fan mail and packages at my address that you saw earlier, but, um, I'm not SMT, so I'll actually appreciate you for it. Will give me it. What will you give me for it? I'm not going to read that aloud. Although I do appreciate you, Jack. You're wonderful. Um, anyways. Guy really splurged and got me two whole bubble mailers. Oh, 
I know what this is. And this thing's a hot mess. Um, I mentioned I paid 75 for the Burke. I paid 65 for this. And uh, there we go. This is going to make you guys cringe so badly. I'm just going to preface this. This is one of the... This is one of the most hideous models I have ever seen. Uh, I bought it anyways because I wanted to, and because you know it's N scale, you got to have all the weird stuff. And I love Hudson's. So um, just something to note: I'm going to replace the steam chests. I have a spare set from a busted up Kato Hudson first edition. Since this thing is such a hot mess, I'm not going to care about it too much. But I'm going to pan this down so you can see just how horrid this thing is. Ready? Probably the most cursed N scale locomotive to ever exist. This is a Norfolk and Western J class Hudson. Um, geez, this man has done a number on the frame, and uh, the valve gear on one side is gone like, actually gone. Like, it's not even there. What the heck? Did it like end up in the package or something? There's a screw speared into the top of this. Holy crap, this thing is in horrible shape. It could be worse. Yes, it certainly could, but this is pretty dang bad. I haven't seen one this terrible like, ever, really. Uh, this thing's really, really bad. I don't see the valve arm anywhere in the packaging. I'm going to keep looking. But, uh, yeah, the seller is going to be getting uh, quite a number of messages about this. Um, holy cow, this thing's terrible. Like, I thought it was going to be bad just because, you know, ugly and unprototypical. But, like, jeez, this thing's been ravaged. And I don't know where. I wonder if the valve arm is stuck inside the shell. Because given the way this thing looks and how the packaging emptied out, I mean, I can't really see anything else. Yes, it is, Jack. <laughs> okay, give me just a moment. I'm going to grab a screwdriver. Okay, let's. I'm just going to check this really quick and then I'll get to opening the rest of the packages. But this is disgusting. This is the later Rail Baron release, so somebody evidently drilled a hole in the shell. Um, as I sort of anticipated, there is absolutely no sign of the valve arm anywhere. Yeah, someone drilled a huge hole in the shell and stuck a screw in there. So, I mean, at least the gear train is in good shape, but this is... Practically unsalvageable from a parts standpoint. I may have a few ideas about what to do with this. Um, maybe I'll make a video on it. But I have some spare driver on from this guy. This is my lovely parts Hudson right here, as you can see. This one has the original metal rods from the first edition of the uh, Kato Hudson's. So maybe I'll take the rods from this, put it on here, and uh, get it operational again. But for now, I'm very unhappy with that one. Jesus, this thing is in ridiculously bad shape. I can't believe this seller. Actually, not going to lie, this might be the worst uh, condition I've ever seen anything from eBay show up in. Not to mention this weird headlight holder. It's missing the original factory uh, mounting points. The one on my Burlington Hudson is much, much cleaner. So I'm going to set that aside. Uh, that's going to be a fun conversation with the seller. All right. Uh, whatever that screw is from, I don't know. Okay, so we got two more packages. Uh, my laptop is low on battery. One moment. There we go. Much better. We're charging again. Ah, this I do know what's in here. 
This one is uh, another Facebook Marketplace package. Uh, this one. So sus. <laughs> yes. It's fun. I enjoy watching it. All right. So this one is another Facebook Marketplace deal. I got these very cheap. Uh, five bucks each after negotiations. So um, these are definitely repair projects. And not ones that I anticipate turning out well. But um, I got them so cheap, I couldn't really say no. What we have here is a couple of, I believe, MRC ROA, I'm not even sure, 060s. This thing is Union Pacific. It's absolutely hideous. And then we've got a, a Western Atlantic one right here. Yep. Or these might be Arnold, actually. Um, they're pretty hideous, but, you know, kind of cool, I guess. This says Western and Atlantic, barely. So, yeah, sweet. But five bucks a piece really cannot complain. Check. You are insane, and it's why I love being friends with you. Okay, uh, we're down to our last one, unfortunately. And this one, I, I'm pretty sure I know what's in here by process of elimination. So let's just go ahead and crack it open. box cutter blade is getting dull, but I'm too lazy to change it. Thanks for showing the Pennsylvania Mountain. I think you're cool. You're my favorite video is Pennsylvania Mountain. You're awesome. Thank you. Like I said, um, when I get to the end of the, the stream, I'll go grab it for you and show it to you really quick. Maybe I'll even run it for a lap or two. Relax. Okay. Mysterious. I actually kind of like this packing method. It's uh, simple, but it's effective enough. Okay, so this is a pretty interesting item as well, um, simply because of how weird and uncommon they are. This is a River Aussie 080, but not a regular one, because check it out. It's got a brass shell. So the story behind this is actually pretty cool. The brass shell comes from a company called Flint Models, uh, based out of Michigan, and they made lost wax castings of the original River Aussie and... Uh, Concor 080 shells. And this is what they look like. Um, originally, this would have had a brass... Wait a minute. This might... Does this have a brass boiler front? No, it does not. Okay, so this has an original plastic boiler front on it. But uh, it looked like this. And actually, they usually came with entire locomotive kits. So it would have included the tender shells as well as... Um, boiler fronts and superheaters, that's missing here. But what I actually bought it for was the drive, because supposedly this thing runs, and uh, that's become unbelievably uncommon as of late. Um, I need to decide if I want to use the flint shell as a display piece and get the original Indiana Harbor Belt 080 up and running, or if I want to get this thing running with the flint shell and leave it as it is. I'm not going to paint this. Um, so many decisions to make, so, many, uh, so little time, but um, we will figure it out probably going to get the original running because I want to keep this shell exposed. I'll put it on a nice rolling display chassis and uh, yeah. Maybe I can use it to a double head stuff. I know I've said the forbidden words, but like if I ever get desperate for views or something, maybe. Put that back on. All right, that's our last package. So um, time to test all this stuff. No, not the Bebemer hand deckler. Is Dan watching or something? We have 18 people watching. Holy cow. Busy stream. Uh, I want to once again take the time to thank everybody who's coming out here to support me and uh, watch the stream. All right. Let's go ahead and, well, um, what do you guys think? I, I don't know. Can I create a poll on this? I don't know how. Hmm. No, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> Okay, um, is there a way I can create a poll in the chat? Does anyone know? Is Dan watching? I think he's watching. I don't know. I just work here. 
Is he texting in the Discord chat? No. Please test FM Crescent, please. <laughs> At least tomorrow, Friday. Yes, tomorrow is Friday. All right. Uh, I've unplugged my mouse. Um, okay, everyone wants me to test out the Franklin Mint Crescent. So I guess we'll head over there. Got to unplug my laptop, and I'm running on battery power now, so this is a little bit dangerous. But uh, come on over with me. I unfortunately don't have the Crescent cars out and ready to go, and I'm not going to put them all on. But uh, yeah, where can I put this? I'm going to put you guys on top of my roads for a bit. Oh, no, that's full of boxes. First, let me set down the crescent. Ah, the chair. Brilliant. Or, no, no, no. I'm going to lose that box. Not in the table. Technical difficulties. I apologize. My budget is so depressingly low that I can't uh, can't get a good angle for you guys. Uh, I got so much stuff I need to move. Jeez, I should have prepared for this more. I didn't realize I'd be testing stuff when I started the live stream. There we go. Got to remove my 759 Berkshire and my Austin and Albany Hudson. We're going to go right about there. I think that'll work. If I can set it up correctly. What am I doing? There we go. It took me long enough. All right, so you can see the tracks now. Um, before I start running stuff, I'm going to just real quick show you guys this. This is my most recent uh, project. If you guys recall, a little bit ago, I bought this guy off of eBay for 75 odd dollars, and uh, it showed up, and somebody had put an LED headlight in it. So I took the junk, or relative junk, 750, or excuse me, 491 that uh, I'd bought off of a guy on Facebook who remotored it with an IHC CAN motor in the dumbest way possible. Um, I swapped the headlight assembly from that one into this one, so I now have a completely original CNO F19. I just realized my laptop is on the track. Okay. i got to move this thing out of the building. There we go. That's much better. All right. So I'm going to take this guy off the tracks. All right. Here we go. Let's see if she will run. I'm, I'm hoping she does. All right. Let's see. I hate Grubhub in their purse. Will crotch cam? Yeah, a bit. Sorry. Um, all right, here we go. In three, two, one. Oh, yeah. She runs. Bit noisy, so she's going to need some grease. It does the thing. It definitely needs uh, a little bit of maintenance, lubrication, uh, some care. I'm just going to see if the headlight's working. Headlight definitely works. It's got a hell of a wobble, though. I don't know if that's a common problem with these. I don't know if you can see that, but it definitely wobbles. Okay, so I'm not going to test the uh, Chesapeake and Ohio Pacific because that would require some assembly. Uh, the drawbar is not connected. Um, unless you guys really, really want me to, you can watch me reinstall the drawbar and uh, do all that. So if you guys would like to see me test that, I can do so. 
Otherwise, I suppose we should head over to the end scale layout because we've got a laundry list of stuff to try out. I need to find one of those. Yeah, it's a wobbly boy. All right, do you guys want me to put this together really quick or not really? And uh, I, my PC is on low battery, so we're going to have to make this move fast if you do. I'll fulfill that. Bye, Coco. All right, uh, seems like nobody really wants to see this thing run, so I'm going to put that aside for now. That's fine. I'll just toss it together on my spare time when the stream is done. All right, I need to move this thing over here for the um, end scale demo. And I do apologize is this thing uh, optimal? Can you see that? Okay, yeah, you can see the track. Okay, at least from a distance. All right, let's grab the charger. All right, we are plugged in. So let's see how's the chat doing. Uh, SMT's here. Hello. If you want to talk about motors. Uh, I can get you some bigger examples of coreless motors, five-pole motors, just about anything that you could possibly need to power that goose of yours. All right, uh, let's see here. What are we doing next? I think the first thing that we're going to try is the Crescent Limited. Give me just a moment to set up the layout. It's been a while. Uh, also, by the way, um, while I'm doing this, if any of you guys need rocks for your layout, uh, like this guy, same colors, the rest of the stuff on there, send me a DM on any of my social media and I will send you some, uh, just within a reasonable number, just pay for shipping because I made way more than I need and uh, I'd rather pay it forward to you guys. All right, there we go. Layout is live. Sorry for the uh, long intermission, but here we go. Let's go ahead and toss the crescent on here. Now, when you're testing out these Atlas and scale Pacifics, you have to be extremely careful not to overdraw current through these because the armature is unbelievably thin. And if you draw current through them for too long at a stand, the armature will heat up and start to melt because the plastic is very vulnerable, uh, which is actually why I have those spare motors from new old stock on hand. Um, in the event that that happens, I have spares, but I normally stand very close at attention when I'm running these, just to make sure. So I apologize for the camera angle. It's going to be difficult to see much on my laptop, but uh, we're just going to see if it runs. Here we go. Applying power in three, two, one. Oh, wow. oh yeah. Let's try it. Yeah, great. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah, sweet. There we go. That's not T still here. It hasn't said anything. You know, but. Okay. 
unless he's composing an essay. I don't know. All right, uh, let's test out the Bachman Mikado next. This guy right here. This draw bar is a, a pain, given that the trailing truck is in the way. Now, this thing I don't expect to run at all because the wheels are out of quarter. If it does, it'll probably jerk. Uh, fortunately, the motors in these old Bachman versions are a little bit more robust, so they can handle a bit of extra current draw. So we're going to see if this one moves. Here we go. Three, two, one, power out. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Never go through this fantastic. Ohio is real. Exactly. Like I don't know why. We discussed that. <laughs> Wow. Okay, I'm thoroughly impressed by this thing. Let's see if it'll first full lap. Seems to be running well so far. There it comes. works too. Actually, I'm just going to start putting these right here. All right, this one in the video description, it said explicitly that this does not run. So let's see if I got lucky here. Also, I'm looking for feedback on the space shirt. If you think it's ugly, let me know. If you think it's cool, let me know. If you think I should die in a hole, let me know. All right, let's give it a shot. I have a feeling this one will move now with the tender frame. It's pretty wonky. Oh. Did I just get spectacularly lucky or something? Because it moved. Um, it appears to be having some traction with me. But I need to see if this thing needs traction tires or something. No, it's moving on now. Okay, that's quite impressive. I think I can actually see the problem. I think one of the tender trucks is dragging. But uh, dang, it runs. Sweet. I was not expecting that. Yeah, this thing needs. Oh. I see the problem. This tender truck is on upside down. Well, uh, I will have to get to work on that later. Oh, by the way, this thing is tiny compared to the other engine. It runs well. All right. Now the one I'm most excited for, the MC Berkshire. Let's give it a shot. Make sure that the little wire is centered well. There we go. These things have a surprisingly big can stop motors in them for their size. Um, there we go. All right. On three, two, one. Pull the power. Push. No response. All right. Quick triage on this guy. Check the tender trucks. Got it. One of the axles is flipped. That's why she's not moving. This thing really doesn't want to pop back into place. Doesn't help that it's spring loaded. There we go. I've had problems with this size of six axle truck not uh, accepting wheels very easily. It happened quite a bit on one of my other tenders, actually. There we go. All right, so that should solve the uh, shorting problem. Oh, 
All right, let's try it again. There we go. In three, two, one. Holy crap. That is whisper silent. I can't hear it at all. Well, I can hear the wheels on the track now, but the slow speed control on that. Wow. Looks like there's a slight bind in the middle of things. But um, I will take a look at that later because, holy crap, this thing is smooth and silent. Much more so than I was expecting. That is phenomenal. Wow. Very impressed. Um, I live in Ohio, by the way. How's it going, Gopher Nuffer? Pretty well. Um, super happy I'm back home. Just got out of a ridiculously stressful week at the university. I had COVID-19 and was in isolation housing. Um, all right, now we're going to test the... This is the last uh, suspenseful one, I guess, because this thing, I really want it to run. I don't know if it will. But um, I'm really hoping it does. So we're going to give it a shot. Already the tender wheels are falling out. Those Atlas truck frames really not wanting to uh, stay together. But we're just going to give it a shot. Let's see what happens. In three, two, one, power. Yes! No way! It runs! Oh, wonderful! It's so long time to find one that works. Sweet! All right. As for the uh, cursed Norfolk and Western engine, I'm not testing that uh, chassis. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to set this aside for now, but that's definitely a project for like five seconds. I'm just going to do a shell swap on the locomotive and uh, bing, bang, boom, you're ready to go. All right, now I'm going to test these things. Um, oh boy, these have cubic zirconia headlights and uh, middle axles freewheeling. So I'm just going to give these a really quick shot, but uh, yeah. Nothing. Do a little move. Oh. Okay, so that one runs. Probably needs some oil. Let's try this guy. I don't know if you saw that, but it just threw sparks. This guy doesn't want to move at all. Um, Real quick, is there anything I can diagnose? I'm seeing a lot of sparks. There's probably a short somewhere. Um, definitely not on the track, so it's probably the engine. But uh, yeah, I was actually hoping it would be the other way around. The UP one would work and the Western and Atlantic one wouldn't, but you know, I might consider selling these. All right. So that's, that's most of the testing. Actually, so um, I believe I did make a promise to one of our viewers. I don't remember what your name is. CSX Railroad, I believe. Uh, I promised you asked out the uh, PRR mountain. So let's go over to my magic boxes. <laughs> Nearly just broke my wrist. Uh, all right. So let's see. Which one is it in? I don't remember. Oh yeah, my, there's your mom. So shut up. Oh, wait, here. 
Don't come. Is it? No. Nope. 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 Uh, I do. If I'm not trying to flex right now. It's in a box. Yes, Brader. It is in a box. Um, I'm not trying to flex or anything right now. I'm just genuinely trying to find this. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, for I believe it was SP forty four forty something who asked about the President's Choice locomotive. Uh, there they are. They're in here. They're awaiting reviews and running demos. But uh, I will get around to them someday. I just don't know how soon, given how busy my schedule's been. Uh, where did I put that thing? I know it's in one of the. Obviously, it's in one of the boxes. It hasn't like vanished into the stratosphere or whatever. But given that the draw bar is permanently coupled to the loco, it's just very difficult to find a place to put it. Um, it might be in one of these. Um, nope, that's not it. Here it is. All right, let's get her out. I'm going to default to the uh, tape roll again. We've got 10 people watching, so lost a good bit of the viewer base, but I kind of expected that. We're nearing the end of the stream. <laughs> We're going to pinch the sides of the container. All right, here she is. Like I said, the only real downside to this locomotive is just how difficult it is to store because of the solid drawbar. There she is. There is your Pennsylvania um, mountain. As noted by Mr. CSX Railroad, uh, this thing is gorgeous. Looks great. Um, a little bit, this is a very interesting model for its history alone. This is the original tooling of the IHC 482 Mountains and their associated tenders, rolling stock, all that stuff. Um, but it's a tender drive. The driven axles on the locomotive are completely freewheeling. So if I give it a little push here, the motor's right here in the tender. Um, and for his request, here we go. Just a little bit of running. This thing performs surprisingly well for a tender drive with a tiny, tiny little plastic pancake motor. Um, the gear ratio is what makes these things viable models. It doesn't want to back up. There we go. I'm going to give it a little bit to kind of break it in after sitting for so long. All right, this is for Mr. CSX Railroad and everyone who stuck around the whole time. Again, I apologize for the uh, abysmal camera quality right now. This is just a very rushed stream. Uh, my phone is currently like out of storage space and all that stuff. That's making its way around. But yeah, if you want to see this locomotive and uh, a few others that will eventually go up soon, uh, in depth, go check out the rest of my channel. This one has its own feature. Then on the next pass, I'll slow it down quite a bit. I got this thing for, I believe, $30. If not $30, it was $40 at a train show. Uh, the only train show I've been to in quite a while because of COVID. But uh, yeah, super pleased with this engine and a lot of the history. And uh, just, just because it's on the track right now. Again, one of my favorite sets of all time. How your HO scale steam engine is coming along the sides of the mountain? Uh, really well. I haven't added too much recently, but uh, yeah, yes, ESE. I'm going to send it by one more time and then stop. Needs a bit of warming up. It's been a while. Here it comes.
Um, there's already an in-depth video on my channel about this locomotive and its IHC consist, but I honestly think I might do a, a remake soon, simply because um, my camera quality at the time was really poor. One more pass, one more pass. Good night, like one real fan. Thanks for coming. It's great to see you. Ten twelve. All right, and we're gonna put a stop on it right around there. All right. Yeah. So I think I love the four eight two. I'll give you a final look at it before I sign off. There she is. Looking great as usual. All right. Well, um, I'm going to sit back down at the uh, the bar. Not even going to lie. At the bar. All right. Well, um, awesome. Just an average Joe boy. Thank you so much for coming. So this is what we're going to call it for the night. Um, one hour, 10 minutes. We had about 20 people in there at once. So super sweet stream. Uh, thank you so much to everyone for your support, for watching, for sticking with me this whole time. Uh, be sure to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. And again, check out my other videos for more information on some of the models you saw tonight and uh, for more content coming in the future. So, And I will see you guys next time.